In Libya, 2022 started and ended as so many in the years following Muammar Gaddafi's ouster have, in a political deadlock. We the youth came out today to demand the end of the transitional period. We want elections. This is the right of the Libyan people and the right of the youth. The street is the basis of legislation, enough transitions. We want legislative and presidential elections, God willing. The country's two governing bodies, the internationally recognized Government of National Unity, led by Interim Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Debebe, and the Tabruk-based House of Representatives, failed to agree on an elections framework in 2021. And in February, the matter became even more complicated when the House appointed Fatih Bishaga as PM, making Libya a state with two competing governments who view each other as illegitimate. I will accept no new transitional phase and we will not step up from our role in the government that we promised the people until an election is held. As the political scene fell deeper into chaos, so did the socio-economic one. Despite having the largest oil reserves in Africa, Libyans have largely not been benefactors of the wealth and instead, like much of the world, faced an inflation crisis they could ill afford. And already the starting point for one of the busiest irregular migration routes in the world, Libya in 2022 saw a rise in migrants attempting to cross the Mediterranean to Europe, with over 136,000 crossing in the first 11 months of the year, a sharp uptick from the last three years. But other actors say Libya is, in part, complicit. We're in total crisis because this country is not able to ensure the coordination of rescues in the Mediterranean. We know that it is a country in the grip of political chaos. And there are human trafficking networks that are imposing themselves and that are, moreover, in collusion with some of the Coast Guards. By August, political bloodshed found its way back onto the streets of Libya when a military convoy affiliated with the eastern-based parliament-backed administration of Fatih Bishaga attempted to enter Tripoli. They were pushed back by forces loyal to Debebe, but the violence left more than a dozen Libyans dead and was the worst the country had seen since warlord Khalifa Haftar's offensive ended in 2020. Despite its internal strife, the internationally recognized Libyan government managed to strike an energy deal with Turkey in October that will see the two countries working together to explore oil and gas in Libyan waters, building on an earlier agreement to demarcate their shared maritime borders. The deal was hailed as a victory for both countries, despite pushback from Greece and Egypt. This is particularly first and foremost a kind of political agreement that suggests that Libyan and Turkish governments uh, commit each other to explore gas and oil resources of an independent sovereign member of United Nations, which is Libya, by Turkish uh, technical capacity. So this is a kind of political agreement. We have never forget this fact. But macro solutions still seem a world away, with both governments blaming each other for holding up elections, and the United Nations saying that some players are actively hindering progress, that every day Libyans continue to pay the price of. Priyanka Navani. TRT World.